Okay, we are going to make goulash tonight. I think it is the number one southern staple one pot meal. This is one of my favorites to use while I am cleaning out the refrigerator and I've actually done that today. I've got a, in my skillet, I mean, I've got a pound of ground turkey and a half a pound of ground pork, ground sausage, and then a whole onion. I chopped it, it was a good size onion. And then I had some zucchini left over from some roasted zucchini left over and I went ahead and dumped that in the pot as well. And so now what I'm gonna do is just kind of move my turkey and pork and onion and zucchini over a little bit. And there's some drippings from the turkey and the sausage. And I'm just, there's, and there's not a lot. There's not enough to drain. It's, it's the perfect amount. And so what I'm gonna do is I diced up one red bell pepper. Now, traditionally, you would want a green bell pepper, but I didn't have one. So I'm using a red bell pepper, um, just one good size. It was probably a medium um, bell pepper or red, red pepper. And then I've got four cloves of garlic that I have chopped. And I'm just gonna put that in the skillet and just let that just saute just for a little bit, just to soften that garlic and the pepper. And then I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna put into it. So once that kind and I turned my pan down too low. <laughs> okay, so you want it to, to saute for sure. So you want there to be a good sizzle so that those um, peppers and garlic will soften and really develop the flavors of the sausage and the turkey. Now, let me tell you what I did do, and I forgot to tell you this. For the sausage and the turkey, I added a teaspoon of salt, and then maybe when I added the onions, maybe a, I did a quarter teaspoon, so the most of it was a teaspoon and a quarter um, of salt, and then I did probably three-fourths teaspoon of pepper, and then one whole teaspoon of paprika. So that was the beginning of the seasonings in the goulash. Now you can add other seasonings. That is basically what I add. I am out of granulated garlic. If I had granulated garlic, I would add a teaspoon of that as well. Um, we had an accident with our garlic and it is not time for me to pick up my Azure standard order yet. So the little bit that we had um, had to go into the trash. Sadly, it dropped and cracked all over the floor. So we had to say goodbye to our garlic for a short amount of time. We will be getting it back in the kitchen very soon. So anyway, so we're gonna just let these, uh, and it doesn't take long for the bell peppers and the garlic to do their, to do their thing. I'm just gonna let them go just for a little bit longer and so while we're doing that, I'm gonna get our next ingredients ready. You're gonna need a can of tomato paste. This is six ounces. And I will tell you that this recipe will actually make two casserole dishes. So I'm gonna have one for dinner tonight and then I'm gonna put one in the, in the freezer. Okay, so once you let that go a little bit, you can stir it all in. Now, this is where the tomato paste comes in handy. You're just going to get that tomato paste. Did I tell y'all this was a one pot meal? Oh my gosh. Maddie helps with dishes at dinner time and she is going to be so excited that she only has to clean up one pot. <laughs> How many, let me know in your comments if your children get excited about one pot meals if they do the dishes. <laughs> Okay, so because of those little bit of the drippings in the turkey and the sausage, you're just going to stir that potato or tomato paste around and let it soak up and just kind of um, work it all into your meat so that the flavor of that tomato sauce gets dispersed all throughout the meat. 
And then we're gonna let that saute for just a little bit, just to kind of cook that flavor into the meat. All right, now, once you've done that, and it doesn't take long, you're just gonna let it sizzle just for a little bit. Kind of like when you cook a roux and you let the flour cook for a little bit before you add the uh, milk or, or your stock, that's what you're doing here. Okay, now we're gonna do a um, 28 ounce or 26 ounce jar of marinara sauce. You could also do uh, crushed tomatoes if you would like. You're just going to stir that all up. And then you're going to take your stock, which would be two cups. And so I have a pint jar of homemade chicken broth or chicken stock. It's not bone broth because it's not gelled. I did can it, so it's, it's past that, but it's about two cups. And you're just going to pour that into, I kind of rinse my marinara jar out. And then you're going to take a can of tomatoes. And I really should have gotten two. Let me run go get one more. So I use organic diced tomatoes. You can use whatever kind of tomatoes. You can also go with a Mexican trim to this, which I have done. And instead of the um, fusilli einkorn um, pasta, I actually use a um, macaroni noodle. And I add corn and black beans and some different spices to it. Okay, so this is your pot for your noodles. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to take a 12 ounce. Um, box of noodles. You can use macaroni, fusilli, the bow tie pasta, any of the little pastas. And you're just going to put this and just stir the pasta into the sauce. And you're going to want to get that to a simmer. So I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit and let that come to a simmer. Once it comes to a simmer, I will put a lid on it and set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, our timer is about to go off and I just want you to know that I have lifted the lid and stirred it um, about every five minutes. So within the 20 minute mark, I would I, I cleaned up, the can got the trash thrown away, got everything cleaned up again loaded up my cutting board and those things into the dishwasher. And so as I would see the timer, oh, five minutes has gone by, I would lift the lid and I would ooh, steam bath. <laughs> and then I would just kind of stir, just like you would if you were making pasta, you stir your pasta. And so that's what I would do. So, move you in a little bit. That I'm stirring that. So the pasta has soaked up the right amount of the sauces, the tomato sauce, the, the water that was in the tomatoes, um, the chicken broth. And notice that all I added was a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half total, where usually you have to add so much salt to your pasta water. And because we had the canned tomatoes, the spaghetti sauce, the chicken stock or chicken broth, all of that yummy flavor has gone into that pasta. So then what I do is I just get a pasta and I just make sure that I can cut it in half with my fork and then I know it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna do a little taste test for you guys. made sure and got a little bit of the zucchini, a tomato, um, a little bit of the turkey. I don't see any sausage. And then a little bit of the pasta. 
know that it's going to be hot. How many of you all grew up on goulash? I know I loved it when I went to my grandma Opal's house and she was serving goulash. And I'm pretty sure that I know, I know she served it regularly and then my family, my mom and dad made it regularly. Goulash was just a southern staple, I think. And it is an amazing one pot meal. It's just those simple flavors of those, of that tomato, just that fresh tomato taste. Hello, Mr. Gavin. We are getting ready to go to baseball practice, and so I'm gonna load this up in our thermoses, and it will be hot and ready for us when we are headed on our way back. Have a delicious dinner in twos tonight. <laughs> but I hope you all will give this a try. It is so much fun to have a good one pot wonder and this is totally a one pot one pot one pot a one pot wonder <laughs>